Hi, welcome to IT for Sustainability or ICT for Sustainability. Both of those are the same thing. IT seems to be the common abbreviation in the US. ICT is the more common abbreviation in Europe. It's short for Information and Communication Technology. Same story. So for the sake of briefness, we're just going to call it IT for Sustainability. Now, if I can ask you to pull out the smartphone of your pocket or pick it up from the table or maybe you're even watching this on your smartphone, how sustainable do you think that device is? Somewhat sustainable? Little so? Very much so? It's a very efficient piece of technology. We've put a lot, a lot of development into making these devices do many different things, all in this one tiny box. But we also see businesses are trying to make us get a new one every two years. Not sure if that's sustainable. That means we create a lot of e-waste. What about how connected you are with people? Do you feel your smartphone connects you more to people? Or do you feel sometimes it may even keep you from, from connecting with people and it disconnects? It's great to pick up the phone and talk to a friend or have a video chat with them. But also sometimes we zone out scrolling through social media or the news or whatever it is. So maybe it's a little bit of both. It can have a connecting factor, so some social strengthening, but it can also have a factor of disconnect and I feel isolated as an individual. So it's tough to answer if that smartphone is sustainable or not. But first of all, at the beginning of this course, I also encourage you to question my questions. Because my question of whether your smartphone is sustainable or not is not yet a very good question. Because Joseph Tainter, an anthropologist, said that there have to be a couple of things that you have to define for telling me something about the sustainability of a system. So about the scoping, he said, you have to tell me for what purpose what purpose you want to sustain, then for whom do you want to do that, for how long, are we talking about the next couple of years, are we talking about a decade, about a century, which business plans ahead for a century, I don't know that many, but if we humans want to stick around as a race, we probably want to plan that far ahead. And the last question is at what cost? And by cost, we don't only look at the return of investment, so it's not only about the economic costs, it's also about the environmental costs. Like what kind of side effects does the system have on the environment? And if we stick with the example of smartphones, meh, we know there is a lot of stuff that goes into those smartphones that we don't have a lot of. There are rare earths and we are already running short on them and we keep extracting them at a rate, well, they cannot be replenished anyways because the earth doesn't generate new types or new amounts of those minerals, but we have to instead find some replacements for them. And the other cost is the social cost. So there can be some things that have social benefit, that increase social equality, and there are things that come at a social cost. For example, when you exploit somebody. So those are the four questions that we need to answer before we can look into whether something is sustainable or not. Now, I already said your smartphone scores pretty good in some of those criteria and in others, maybe not so good. So when we talk about IT for sustainability and we have all those great ideas about we've become way more efficient and technology is solving so many problems, maybe there's another side that we have to look at. 
Because if you think about all the phones that you've had so far, even if you try to last, last really long, you may get a new phone every five years. That's pretty much where I've been able to max it out to because at some point software is not updated anymore or you're not able to install new things that you're supposed to work with. So eventually you'll have to replace it. What happened to the old one? Did you sell it secondhand? Great thing. Um, is it still laying in the drawer? It's not going to go anywhere anymore. So we are creating e-waste with that. And at the same time, when you think back a while, now if you're my age or older, you can think about your parents, how many devices they had. If you're way younger than me, just, um, just go ask them. <laughs> like when you were young, how many technology devices did you have? Um, did, did you have a computer at home at all? Um, and now most of us have a laptop and a smartphone and maybe a tablet. And so now the tendency goes towards several devices per person. And this is something that our success in efficiency has brought us to. So by making technology ever smaller and ever more efficient, we now also produce and keep even more of it around. That's what's called a rebound effect. And so when we look at all the different types of technology that we have, we can see that IT can be part of the problem. Or it can be part of the solution. When it is part of the problem, that is because we need resources to make it. So the resources that go into creating IT, that is a certain cost to the earth, um, economic costs, and there is no um, way to apply this yet to the solution part, but we'll get to that in a second. On the next level, when we look at the things that technology enables, then we can see that, um, sorry, I should add here during the manufacturing process. So what goes into IT while it is being manufacturing, factured? <laughs> it doesn't really work that well to write and to think and talk at the same time. <laughs> okay, here we go, manufacturing. Um, now, when we talk about the enabling, that means IT can be used to exploit the environment even more, or um, it's, it can use a lot of energy. On the other hand, almost at the same time, we can also use IT solutions to help us preserve some resources. So, for example, by using a more efficient robot that helps us manufacture a certain thing, we may be able to save a lot of energy. So these are just examples. That's not the whole story of the enabling effects. It's just examples for what they could be. And then on the third level, the most abstract level, we talk about systemic effects. That means what happens if a lot of people use a system over a long period of time? What would the effect of that be? And that's what we call rebound effects. And this is the example I was talking about when I said we used to have maybe one IT device per household. Now most people own several of them. On the other hand, we could probably affect positive behavior change with a lot of people if we use the right systems over a long period of time. Let's think about car sharing, for example. If many people started to use car sharing systems, then over time we would not have as many parking space problems anymore, the air quality in our cities would get better, and so on and so forth. And with that, our overall carbon footprint would decrease.
let's say, towards sustainable habits. So we see ICT can be part of the problem and it can be part of the solution. IT is just a tool. We can use it for good or for bad. And now if you think about a couple of the larger things that we thought are really going to help us along, we've seen the efficiency of devices is not the whole story because it can lead to a rebound effect. What do you think about emission trading? We know that a lot of countries have established emission certificates, which means if I have a company that blows a lot of um, bad air, pollution up in the air, and I can then pay somebody else uh, to plant a forest for me so that my conscience is clean because that lovely person planted a forest for me after I paid the money for it, so I can just continue to blast dirt in the air, right? That's what we call a technological quick fix. So we're not solving the underlying problem. We're just trying to fix a symptom, which in that case would be we're trying to even out the carbon emission balance. What should we be doing instead? I should stop blowing dirty air up. I should find cleaner manufacturing processes. And we can find a couple more of these IT solutions where we think we fixed something with technology, but we are really just fixing a symptom and we're not really dealing with the underlying problem. So that's a big part of what I want to look into you, um, sorry, what I want to look into with you in this course how we can differentiate, how we can see both sides of the coin, and how we can um, find a way to, to analyze what the bottom line is, if that's a good or a bad thing, and if it's something worth investing in, or if it's something to be cautious about. Very often, sorry, I can take that away already now, very often the answer is it's both. So there will always be trade-offs we'll have to make, and it will depend on the specific situation where we want to deploy an IT system. But with this course, you will at least have a tool set at hand, a set of methods, a set of guidelines that will help you come to uh, conclusions that are founded on deeper analysis.